Hey, what's up, mortals? It is I, the Silent Sheep Dog, here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 10 of What If Deku Had the System. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. A bright light shone, blocking any field of vision. There was no feeling, no actual thought, and no sense of existence. Wherever this was, whenever this was, it was not the world that he knew. But it somehow brought a warming feeling. The light slowly dimmed, and the world finally came into focus. What could be seen was a world of bright golden light and the most vibrant colors. It was silent, but not in an eerie way. The lack of sound was comforting and calm. It didn't take long before the light revealed more of this place and the people in it. There were a handful of individuals, lined up in an orderly fashion. One of them seemed more surprised than the others as he looked at his own hands. His body was covered head to toe in armor, gleaming with gold and bright color. On his back were multiple sets of white wings that almost radiated their own purity. He looked around him to see that the others were very much like himself, all adorned with their own armors and wings. They were all angelic. He did not know what this world was, and he did not know who these individuals were. Yet, he felt at peace here. He almost felt at home. There was also an innate familiarity with the other angelics, a kinship and trust of sorts. The unnamed angel looked ahead, before marching alongside his brothers. In front of them was a massive gate, covered with various carvings. He didn't recognize it, but he almost knew what awaited behind it. He could feel the aura that it gave off. Despite not knowing of this place, he felt at home. He was with his brethren in a heavenly realm, marching on for a greater cause. Everything was in order. The only thing missing was an answer. He only needed to know what this was. What it meant. The angel continued forward as the gate slowly opened. Despite his lack of knowledge, he knew where his answer was. Behind that gate, he would find what he was looking for. His answer. His lord. His god. My liege! A voice called out. The world image shattered as his eyes flung open. Izuku was now wide awake, brought back to reality in this dark room. It was in the middle of the night, so he had been noticeably shaken. The grinette rose up from his uncomfortable position on the floor, in which he had fallen asleep somehow, as he looked towards the source of his disturbance. Mm, waking me up from my slumber. You're treading on thin ice now, Igris, he said, clearly tired and grumpy from being woken up so suddenly. The Shadow Knight didn't budge. He only grumbled as he said, Forgive me, my liege, but in my defense, you told me to report back to you as soon as I returned. Besides, you shouldn't be sleeping with such an awkward posture. Izuku couldn't be upset with the knight, for he had been correct. Igris had been ordered to report back upon arrival. The only thing that would prevent that was if Izuku was speaking to someone else. As much as the Greenette enjoyed his sleep, this was more important. <sighs> You're right. I was just dreaming, I guess. He then said, after sighing heavily. Izuku then rubbed his eyes, trying to wash away his need for sleep. Igris looked a little intrigued upon hearing this as he asked. Was it a bad dream? While sounding both concerned and curious at the same time. Izuku tried to think back to this dream, but it was strange. There was so much to it that he didn't understand, yet he felt as if he knew about it deep down. He had never seen those things before, but he felt as if he recognized it somehow. It was odd, but with how vividly he could recall everything, it felt more like a distant memory than a dream. No, it was rather pleasant, actually, the Greenette then said, sounding rather saddened as he did. Igris felt bad upon hearing this, believing that he had actually been a disturbance to his master. 
Izuku only looked at him in silence without an expression. Igris didn't know what to make of this, for it was unreadable. He couldn't tell if his master was angry or if he just didn't care. He would be surprised, however, when Izuku walked up to him. He was now confused and wanted to ask what was going on, but was cut off when Izuku hugged him tightly. The knight didn't know how to react to this. His body didn't even allow him to react in any way. He was simply frozen in place, subjected to a spontaneous embrace, as his master muttered the words, I've missed you. With a fragile tone, Igris's eyes widened upon hearing this, for he hadn't expected this at all. The way that Izuku was behaving, it was as if he had been struggling. Igris was sure that his master would be fine on his own, but Izuku was relying on him far more than he could have imagined. The knight didn't say anything to this, for he had accepted it. He wrapped his arms around his master, returning the embrace, like a true friend. The two of them remained like this for a short while not moving in the slightest, until they heard something. It had come from outside the room, and they both knew what it was upon turning towards it. Through the crack of his bedroom door, Izuku could see that the hallway lights had suddenly been switched on. This, along with the faint sound of footsteps, told him what was happening. His mother was still awake. Igris seemed to catch on to this as they both tried to be as silent as possible. They could see a shadow pass by the door, but they didn't allow themselves to panic. If they panicked, Inko would enter the room and find out about the Shadow Soldiers, and that Izuku had been lying to her for a while now. The silence remained for an unbearable amount of time, until the lights went out once more. They remained still for a few moments, making sure that Inko had actually left, until they both let out a sigh of relief. This is also when they decided to return to the matter at hand. They both moved towards the window, which just so happened to be the farthest distance away from the rest of the apartment. Now they could converse, so Izuku began. So? What did you find? The green-haired boy asked, almost whispering at this point. Igris didn't waste any time, looking at his master as he whispered. We managed to locate the hero killer. It turns out that you were right about his pattern. He took his third victim just recently. If we don't act soon, he'll claim a fourth one and then move on. Izuku was only a little surprised to hear this. He was sure that his pattern had been correct, but he had thought that Stain would have caught on to him. This reassured him to an extent, but it also left him with a dilemma. His teachers would want him to report back to them with everything that he knew. But was that his best course of action? He couldn't stop thinking about that looming and terrifying threat, the Monarch of Destruction. That man could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like All Might, even injure him beyond reparation. If he was to have a chance against that thing, he needed to grow much stronger, and he needed to raise his army much, much faster. The problem was that the dungeons he cleared barely gave him any strong resurrections, which means that he has to turn to his own world for an answer. Here, there were certain individuals that are stronger than most, and there are many of them. Izuku turned his eyes back to Igris as he asked, do we still have someone telling him? While still whispering. The knight looked rather confused as he responded by saying, Yes, we have eyes on him at all times. With a hushed tone. Izuku was silent for a while, as if he was making an important decision, until he said, Take me to him. I'd like to speak to him. With a calm and hushed tone, Igris was thrown off guard by this so much that he was ready to shout. He did manage to calm himself down, however, as he whispered, But, my liege, he is a dangerous man. He has already hurt and killed numerous heroes. Aren't we better off just reporting back to the mouse? In what seemed to be a controlled panic. Izuku barely reacted to this as he looked out the window and said, I also found out something today, about the Monarch of Destruction. Turns out that All Might has encountered him before, and almost died fighting him. I tried to heal him today, but it didn't work. It turns out that the injury had been cursed, because it was inflicted upon him by the Monarch of Destruction. With a rather serious tone, Igris was at a loss for words. He didn't know All Might to the same extent as Izuku, but he knew enough to say that the man was incredibly powerful. 
To think that he had been injured so badly by anyone was shocking. It scared even him. This made him think over their options, until he realized what his master was planning. The knight looked at his green-haired master, wanting to ask if he was thinking what he thought he was thinking. Izuku already sensed this question coming as he looked at Igris and said, The man kills heroes, and right now it might be exactly what we need, before opening the window widely. This video was sponsored by Honey. Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, Safari. If it's a browser, it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, and Kohl's. Wherever you shop, it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these big sites is click that little orange button, and it'll scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you. It takes two clicks to install Honey. Now, anytime you check out, Honey will scan the whole internet and find coupon codes for you. If there's a coupon code, they'll find it. And if there's not a coupon code, you can rest assured that you're getting the best price possible. If you install Honey right now, you can save so much money on your online shopping, doing nothing. There's no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks, 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews. Unless you hate money, you should install Honey. Use the link in the description to start saving money now. It took some time, and they had to be careful, but Izuku and Igris managed to get where they wanted. The city was dark and silent, just as the streets were empty, and the dark duo made their way through it. The person they were looking for was somewhere in this city, hiding in places that most wouldn't think to search. The Greenette didn't need to search for long, because half the work had already been done by Igris. He just needed to go where Igris told him to, and that he did. He entered dark alleys, scaled buildings, until he ended up on the rooftops. That is where he found who he was looking for. The hero killer himself. The crimson-clad murderer stood with his back toward him. But that didn't make him any less menacing. The aura that he gave off was one of bloodlust. So thick that it could almost drown him. Izuku could feel himself trembling, but he steeled himself shortly after. Even if Stain was terrifying... He had faced many terrifying enemies. Besides, Igris was still waiting in his shadow. Whoever you are, I suggest that you leave. I don't take kindly to stalkers. The man said with an equally menacing voice, fully acknowledging Izuku's presence. The green-haired boy shook a little upon hearing this, but he quickly calmed himself as he walked forward and said, That's too bad because I'm afraid that I can't leave just yet, before stopping just a few meters away from the Crimson Killer. Stain turned around upon hearing this, only to be a little confused. The one that stood in front of him was no more than a teenager, and he didn't even look physically imposing. Yet, somehow, he could feel that there was far more to this boy than he could see. Who are you? The hero killer asked, trying to sound more threatening than before. The boy seemed to be unaffected by the potential threat as he raised his right arm while saying, I'm not your enemy. At least, not yet. Rather calmly. What happened next shocked Stain. Out from the boy's shadow rose a dark figure. It didn't take long for him to see that it was a knight made from darkness itself. The hero killer was shocked because he recognized this type of entity. Up until now, he had thought that he was imagining things, but now he knew better. This was one of the beings that had been following him for quite some time now, and this boy seemed to be connected to them. Why are you here? And make it quick. I already told you that I don't take kindly to stalkers, and it would appear that you've been stalking me for quite a while now. Stain then said, not lowering the threat in his tone. The boy seemed to be a little surprised, so did the knight. But it didn't last long before he said, So you noticed? I shouldn't be surprised. You wouldn't have been able to kill and escape all those heroes if you didn't, just as calmly as before. Now Stain was alarmed. This boy knew about him, and he knew what he did. The hero killer unsheathed his sword, as he then repeated his previous questions. Who are you, and why are you here? 
with murderous intent. To his surprise, however, the boy was unaffected. He merely raised both of his arms as he said, Calm down. I already told you that I'm not your enemy. I happen to be a hero in training, but I'm not here to fight you. You know that I've been keeping tabs on you for a while, so I could have easily gotten you arrested during that time. But I happen to admire your work, so I'd like to talk to you before we decide to do something rash. Stain held his sword pointed towards the boy, ready to attack at any moment. With how much he knew it would be too dangerous to keep him alive. But he had a point. He could have easily turned him in long ago, but he didn't. If anything, that meant that he could be trusted. To some extent. The hero killer lowered his sword upon realizing this as he said, Then talk. But answer me this. Why would a hero in training admire someone like me? With a much calmer voice. The boy lowered his arms upon hearing this. Stain didn't know what was happening inside his head, but it looked like he was thinking very carefully. Then he looked at Stain as he said, Because I see what you're trying to do. You want change. You're killing the heroes you deem unworthy in hopes of changing society. I want that too. I want to change the world. With a more serious tone. Stain was a little thrown off by this, for he didn't fully understand what the boy was talking about. This was answered fairly quickly, however, as the boy continued. I have a terrifying quirk. One that no one else knows about, because it would never be accepted by society. I live in fear, afraid that someone will find out and knock my door down. I know that there are others like me, and the unfortunate ones that couldn't hide it. No one should have to be treated like that because of their quirk. That's why I want to change the world. I want people to be accepted. Now Stain was even more shocked. He had expected something petty. That the boy just liked killing heroes. But that wasn't the case. He had real conviction. And something that he wanted to achieve. This made the Crimson Murderer lower his guard even further, as he then asked, So... What are you actually trying to say? Wondering what the boy actually wanted with him. It was silent for a while, but then the greenette took a deep breath before saying, I have a proposition. An alliance, of sorts. Clearing the bad parts of society is a good start, so I wish to help you with your cause. With the same serious tone. Stain could feel that this was the case, and he did see promise in the boy. There was just one thing that he was curious about. And what do you want in return? The killer asked, hoping to get a swift answer. The boy suddenly turned cold as he answered. Of all the people that you attack, heroes and villains, I only want their dead bodies. With a much colder voice, Stain had not expected this kind of response and the implications that came with it. It implied that the boy wanted him to kill all of his victims from now on. He couldn't understand it, so he asked. What could you possibly gain from a pile of corpses? With a rather curious and confused tone, the boy kept his calm and cold composure, not letting up in any way as he quickly responded. I'm afraid I can't tell you that, until our alliance is official. Stain was shocked, once again. But it made sense. The boy didn't want to share his secrets needlessly. He couldn't blame him for that. It did leave him a weird choice, though, because now he didn't know what he would be getting into. He knew that this boy was quite capable. His actions so far have proven that. He also had great conviction, so things pointed towards a yes. The only thing that stopped him was the demand. He didn't know why the boy wanted the corpses, and it was this that held him conflicted. The hero killer remained silent for a long while, until he turned his back to the boy. Wait here. I'll return with my answer shortly. He then said before leaping away. Izuku was confused by this, but he could understand the killer. This was a lot to think about, so he wasn't going to complain about waiting. My liege, are you sure that we could trust him? Igris then asked, sounding a little concerned as he did. Izuku looked towards the knight with a calm expression as he then said, If he wanted us dead, he would have attacked while I was talking. 
but he didn't. As for when he returns, we'll just have to wait and see. No matter what happens, I know you'll have my back. Before smiling at the end. Igoris was a little thrown off by this, but he chuckled soon after. <laughs> As you wish, my liege. Izuku and Igoris waited patiently on the rooftop. Time passed quite slowly. For them, it seemed like Stain wasn't coming back. Then, just as Izuku thought he had scared the killer off, he heard something land on the rooftop. The green-haired boy turned towards it, only to see that it was none other than the hero killer himself. Izuku stood up and faced the man, noticing how he was carrying something over his shoulder. He didn't let this occupy his mind, however, as he looked at Stain and said, That took a while. I wasn't sure you would come back. With an almost comedic tone. Stain didn't react to this, acting as if he didn't like comedy. Izuku sensed this and immediately returned to his serious expression before asking, So? What's your answer? With an equally serious tone. Stain didn't change his expression as he dropped whatever was on his shoulder down to the floor while saying, I've got my answer. Right here. Izuku was a little confused by this, until he looked closer. What Stain had brought to him was exactly the thing he had asked for. A dead body. Not only that, but upon closer inspection, he could actually see who it was. The person that was in front of him was a pro-hero. Ida's older brother, Ingenium. The green-haired boy shook a little upon realizing this, wondering what could have happened. Ida had told him that his brother had been hospitalized, meaning that he was still alive after his encounter with the hero killer. This can only mean one thing. Stain went to finish the job. I've given you my answer. May I now know what you plan on doing with these corpses? The hero killer then asked, knocking Izuku out of his thoughts. The green ant was confused for a while until he realized what Stain meant. He had brought him a corpse, the exact thing that he asked for, as a response. This only meant one thing. The alliance was on. Izuku didn't hesitate anymore. He knew that he was going to have to do this eventually. It was only a matter of time. He walked up to the lifeless hero, its remnants of its soul protruding from it like smoke. He stopped in front of the corpse, before uttering a word that he was already familiar with. Arise. In response to this, something started to form in the black smoke. Within just a second, a shadow soldier of what used to be Ingenium stood in front of him. The new soldier wore its own armor, looking just like its hero costume, only pitch black, like the shadows it inhabits. Izuku inspected his new soldier carefully until he noticed that it could be named. This made him think for a second. He could easily just call it Ingenium. That wouldn't be right. He should give it a new name. One to signify its... new purpose. He kept thinking, looking at the armor as he did. That is when he began thinking of the knight in old tales and legends, and there was one that caught his interest the evil knight from Arthurian legend. Your name will be... Mordred, the greenette said, quite coldly. The shadow nodded at this, accepting its new name. With the new soldier named, Izuku turned his attention back to Stain. The killer was stunned with his eyes wide open, as if he didn't want to believe what he just saw. That is, when Izuku summoned six more soldiers before saying, now that the alliance is made, it's time that I hold up my end of the deal. You keep giving me your victims, and I'll help you in your cause. Mordred, along with these six, will accompany you. These soldiers can hide in shadows, understand and carry out difficult tasks, all while they can't be killed. These seven, and perhaps many more in the future, are yours to use now, however you please. With a cold voice. Stain was silent during all of this. Eyes and mouth still wide. That's when he started to chuckle. Then it turned into a violent and maniacal laughter. Izuku was a little confused by this until the laughing man explained himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. 
Oh, you just surprised me. Here I thought I would gain an apprentice, but I was mistaken, he said, while chuckling a little between his words. Izuku got even more curious now. That's when Stain held his hand out in a welcoming manner as he said, I didn't get an apprentice. I just found my partner in crime. You and I will get along very well, my friend. With a broad smile on his face, Izuku was shocked to hear this, but that quickly vanished. Everything had gone exactly as he wanted it. The young shadow monarch smiled back at his partner as he happily shook his hand. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects that our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I would like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.